my name is Jakub Vasilev. Born in Bulgaria, town Starzegora, in 1951. Everything was our parents' own. Everything had been stolen from them. They've been forced to give all their properties, land, houses, businesses, everything. My father, he was a barber. He had his barber shop. When the government walked in his barber shop and say, from today, you are not the owner. You will work for us. Barber shop belongs to us. My father never ever accepted that and say, nobody can stop me to work. This is my business. I had nothing else to do. I have three kids and nobody can stop me to work. And of course, he slipped some strong words against them, telling them the truth about what they are. And he ended up in forced labor camp for one year. When they let my father free, he went back to the barber shop. The door had been nailed. He break the door and invite his clients back again. The father, he never ever accepted the system. He was working for himself. He was very proud and hardworking Bulgarian man. When I was 12, my neighbor, young boys, 17 and 16, they decide to escape. One of the boys took his father's bike to jump on the bike and they decide to cross the border through Turkey. But whoever trying to cross the border there, they shoot him. And three young boys, they've been shot right on the barrel. We've been studying philosophy of communism. And my teacher, She's been promoting the, the communism. She's been telling us that when we grow, everything will be for free. We just need to walk in the store and by, by our demands, we can pick up anything what we need. But that was a big lie. Before the end of the hour, she asked, do you have any question, kids? At that time, I raised my hand and I said, teacher, why they killed our neighbors when they tried to flee to cross the border? And she took me right to the principal. And they didn't ask me questions, they just break a walnut. They spray the, the shells on the concrete. I've been punished to nail on that shells, facing the wall, holding my hands up for a long time. And 20 minutes later, half an hour, you can't keep your hands anymore. The bloodstream doesn't go up and you get tired. And when you drop them, they'll beat you. They'll beat you with a belt, with a leather belt. And I'm going back home. I was crying. And mom, she looked at me, my eyes still wet, and says, what's going on? What's happened? And I say, mom, I just ask a simple question. I grew up with a family, with a parents. They've been loving parents, down the earth, simplicity in life. But the parents they have, I never trade them with anybody because they gave me the freedom. They, three sons, they gave us the freedom to be who we are and to ask, always to ask questions. In the house, we can talk about anything. We've been asking uncomfortable questions but we've been told that out from the house we never talk about. Of course, we're not all brainwashed. There's so much brainwashness. Through the time of socialism, if you accept the propaganda, if you accept the big lie, the big promise, you're fine. You can have food on the table, you can have a job, and enough money not to die of hunger. But it was a misery. I was saving my money and one day I had my, my plan, my secret plan to escape, to cross the border. 
and unfortunately I didn't have I didn't have idea what is the meaning to try to cross the border. We have bob wire signal system, electric lines, you can burn there or they can shoot you. There is no way even bird cannot escape from there. I fell down on the ground, I was crawling, there was some shooting. German shepherds got me there. When they grabbed me, I was kicked, I was beaten, I was with broken neck, broken jaw. When I asked for the restroom and there was a tiny little mirror, I looked at myself, I was swollen like a tomato, big tomato. I've been sent in forced labor camp for one year. In a bit of moments, we are becoming more stronger. They met the most unique people, the brain of the nation. They highly educated, strong spirit, incredible people. And in, 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 instead to become a weak, I become stronger. When they let me free from the camp, every day I have to go back to the police station and I have to sign that I'm still in the town. I've never been allowed to leave the town. They've been watching me, I've already been in the blacklist. The only job that I can take was to become a driver of experimental animals for the Veterinary Institute where the scientific researchers, they've been experimenting with animals. When I get the job as a driver, that was the time when my life had changed. A man who had ordered a car to transport something, and it's happened that was the photographer of the Veterinary Institute. His name was Kobe Page, long beard man, long hair, joyful, just full with energy. He just looked at me and said, boy, I need the car, but I don't need the girl to sit on my seat. She has to sit on the back. And I turned to him and I said, sir, if you don't mind, ladies first, have a seat behind and shut up. He looked at me, straight and eyes, with a nice smile and say, you'll be the one, I already choose you. I've been looking for student, and you shall be my student. And I say, well, I don't think that I can be a student because I'm already in the blacklist. Being with me, you shall be in trouble. And so and so, that's what I'm, I'm coming from. I don't want to hide that, you better know it. And, and Coco, that was the moment when he smiled and say, that's why, that's what I like with you, your openness and your sharpness. And so he turned to me and said, today is Monday, coming Wednesday, here is my phone, and we can start. Both with Valentina, we look at each other, and I could, okay, so let's go on. But suddenly I turned to him and I say, Colo, let's do it right now. He said, okay, deal. He gave me a, a practical camera made in East Germany. Simple, just film camera. He explained me how to work with the camera, about f-stops, about the speed of the film, how to load and what is the composition. He quickly, he drew me the composition and he asked me, what do you think about photography? And what do you think about photographers? And I just look at him and I say, for me it's magic. I went and I shot 36 exposure film. I came back to him and say, now I'll teach you how to develop your film. We walk in the dark room. Outside, he took already exposed film. He showed me how to load the tank. And then he said, now you can do it on your own. This is your developer. This is your fixer. In between, you have to watch your film. And we'll see what you have photographed. And when he took out my first film, he looked at frame by frame by frame. He come close to me, like the father, kiss his son. He kissed my forehead and he turned to me and said, you bless my son, you'll be the one. You should pay back anything that I haven't done. You'll be my continuation.
and that's what is happening. Then I realized that I, he gave me a tool, that I, I realized that I have a voice, that was my voice, that I can express myself to start to paint with light.